Star Atlas is an absolutely amazing looking video game. It has everything you could potentially want in a video game. Play to earn model, trade, massive universes, deep space exploration, weapons, character design, like what more could you ask for? But really, is that all that you need when it comes to a token you wanna to hold in your portfolio? In this video, I'm gonna take a look and try to answer that question. Now, before I get too deep into it, you know the drill. This is not financial advice. It's just an opinion and not something you should take to the bank. All that said, let's jump into the video. Now I've given you my opinion right off the bat. This isn't a stellar looking project. And normally when it comes to looking at these projects, I will jump over to the screen, start looking at the charts, look deep into the tokenomics and really vet whether or not the team is good, what the, what the social profiles are saying, what people are saying out there in the economy. But I'm just gonna skip right to this race. It's great. It looks fantastic. It uses the Unreal 5 engine. It's a fantastic looking video game. Everything they're doing marketing wise is really hitting the points you wanna see for a game that's really just put out there. They, they're very transparent about what they're doing. Their Discord is filled with information. They have massive white papers in the background. It's great. But I really wanna analyze this from a slightly different perspective because I think this is the perfect representation of how we should separate a project for an individual source like a video game versus an ecosystem driven project or token over here. Those are two very different things we need to look at and two different, very, very different ways you need to look at approaching with investing. Personally, when it comes to investing or tokens I wanna to get invested in, especially monetarily, I generally look at things on a larger scale about ecosystems. I try to get projects that are either underlying fundamentals to more ecosystem growth, where there will be other projects on top of it, or ones that can entice other groups to get involved. Developer, making it so other developers can build on top of it, or bringing advertisers and users, you know, a lot of other people coming, different types of people coming to the project, not just one specific type. And this is something we need to draw attention to right at the beginning. Star Atlas is a video game. It's straight up a video game at its core. That's what it wants to be. It wants to be the best deep space video game as it can. That said, where it will be in the future doesn't necessarily mean that's all it will stop at. It can continue to grow through the future. But what we are given right now, we have to work with the information we have. And a video game is a video game. And as we have seen in the past, it is a very interesting and fickle sort of community because there's always something new on the horizon. Not to mention, there's all the different groups of people who come across that are playing video games for different reasons. I'm playing a first person shooter over here, but that person's playing you know, World of Warcraft, and that person over there is playing Elden Ring, and that person over there playing a race car game. They're all playing different video games, and no one video game contains all market share of video games. Now, I've talked about this before, that it's like $180 billion market cap in the industry for video games, and there's like three billion players, video game players in the world, but that is segmented up amongst all the different genres across the different platforms across, you know, not to mention mobile is coming up and becoming one of those new big players in the space. And so you really start to question whether or not one specific video game is a very massive play or something you want to have deep into your investment portfolio. Now, it may be one way to sort of diversify a little bit to sort of take yourself out of some of the major infrastructure because there will be a lot of competition there and getting into, say, just a particular video game that you're really passionate about. But that said, there's also going to be competition there too. As we've seen plenty of times before, we've seen competition come, like I said, people are very fickle, a new video game is on the horizon, let alone you have to constantly be innovating and updating on your video games in order to keep your player base there. This is one of the things that concerns me is when I look at the video game structure that it's out there right now, we see massive video games with massive buildup and a lot of years of development coming out to just flop. Anthem is one to name. Uh, Destiny didn't do great. It's even though it's still pushing, it really didn't do as good as they wanted it to. You look at, uh, what's another big one? There's a lot of really big video games out there that have had huge marketing campaigns that really didn't take them very far and would, would again, be given just the title of that, a flop. So this is the first thing I want to acknowledge when it comes to this, is that I may be a little bit apprehensive to hold this token because it is just a video game. That said, what they are looking to do in the deep down bottoms of their fundamentals as a video game, the overall economy and trade that they're looking to implement into this game could be something that could propel the team and the developers behind it into other ideas and projects out the future. And whether or not it will be contained within this one project and just morph into another one is something to be considered. 
or whether they will jump ship and make a whole new project taking all their IP or taking all their understanding and applying it to there. But I really think that there's a very deep mechanic that they're developing here when it comes to the economy of a video game. And they go into depth unlike anything I've seen before. Now there are plenty probably out there that have gone through the, the economy and how they wanna explore it and how they wanna make that the main key, key underlying factor of the video game. But this is the first one I've come across that really goes into it. It has a 40 page economy white paper just for the video games economy, how it's going to work, showing you, exploring the ideas, where they, why they think it'll work, why they don't. They've even made a separate token, the Star Atlas DAO, which you can go and purchase for other in-game portions, which allow the governance and allow cities to be created and allow you to have ownership. So it has a lot of promise for what they're actually trying to do underneath it. But when I come back to Star Atlas, I really start to look at the specifics. It's a space exploration video game. It's going to be probably in depth and it's going to be specifically to the computer. So you've removed all your console players. It's probably not gonna be mobile and the in-depth nature of it removes a lot of casual video gamers right off the bat. Not to mention the fact that it's deep space also segments your player base again. So these are really some important things I think you need to factor in when it comes to the video game. Being a big fan of the game is one thing, putting $1,000, $10,000, $100,000 into an investment as a video game is a completely different thing. Now, when I think about buying into a video game, I generally think about buying into the company that is making the video game. I would rather purchase Activision stock than owning Call of Duty. I would rather get into Blizzard than owning StarCraft, World of Warcraft, etc. right? So the concept there is, again, the infrastructure builders, the, the fundamental project behind it, which has all the say and kind of funnels all the work coming and going. We're in a new space with crypto video games and I think that Star Atlas is one of those that's coming between the two where the project was made for the sole purpose of this. And we've seen many, many projects come out of video games they've made to become massive developers. Valve is one of them. The creators of Steam, they have a massive ecosystem they have managed to develop off of their original video game, Half-Life, right? It's really something massive came out of it because it was received very well. And that said, I think that this project, if it's going to do well, will probably do well. It has the potential to go on with it and I really appreciate what they're trying to do. I just wanna put it as a little bit of a note that it's a video game. You need to remember, it's just a video game. So with all of that said, again, I'm really bullish on it as far as a video game. So let's look at the charts really quickly and kind of just kind of walk through some of our normal an analysis to see if it still has any price prediction that we can make on it that would give us some bullish signs to hold it. So if we jump over to, I've got Star Atlas pulled up on coin market cap as usual, we can see that it's currently at a market cap of 61 million. So let's call it 62 for change. So about 62 million, it's, it's, it's going with a, 100 billion or no sorry not 100 billion a 1 billion market cap if it was fully diluted again that meaning that if the full market supply was out there part of the tokenomics for this are going to be that 20 percent are given to the uh, development team and the seed fundraisers uh, at, after phase two of the launch and then the other 80 percent of it will be allowed through in-game assets or playing through the game right so you will be able to purchase some some atlas obviously for liquidity on dexas ftx is a partner in the development of this so ftx being a very massive dex uh, out there or set at cex uh, being a massive exchange that you can get involved with you want to you know look at that and go oh well, that's interesting they definitely are providing liquidity but a lot of the the liquidity or a lot of the supply from it is eventually going to come through the game that's kind of cool so that means that they're putting the chips into the video game and you've got to get involved there seems to be like an inflation period at the end of it that will be allow it to continue going after the entire range of supply has kind of been put out there but 61 is really a pretty small um, market cap and i think that that's a little light for it now i've seen video games that are bigger um, with much bigger market caps that aren't doing quite as much as this. So I feel like that's undervalued right now. And we can kind of see that when we're looking at the charts. We know that all the altcoins have been hit hard pretty much now at the end of this, uh, you know, we're into this early 2022 bull run finishing up. Um, oh, I gotta zoom out a little bit. I'm not all the way at the bottom. So it's even worse there. But I generally like to go and have a look. I've done, I've zoomed out onto the all tab here. And I like to look at it over time. Let's look at the project history from where it's kind of come from starting. 
And uh, you know, it, it started only in 2021. So it's really new into being, you know, in the development. This is why I kind of also am really happy about it. It's got a lot going on for it. It really is trying to communicate a, a good information. And it really didn't have the same sort of run up you would see for a lot of altcoins with a really low sort of share. And then all of a sudden through that end push there at the end of 2021 being a massive peak. And 11, 24, 29, somewhere in 11, at the end of November was when the, the final like peak we had for the bull run of 2021 was. And um, that's where I would look for seeing the, the peaks. And we can look at that and we can see where we've come to. So really we're at a 20 cents was where the peak was. We're looking at about a two, two, two cent, thir three cent sort of range. So eight to 10 X from here. So that's not a bad place to be, but it's not quite the same X that I would have liked to have seen from its initial development phase. I'm gonna chalk this up to the fact that it probably was because it was in the middle of a bull run that it, it, uh, it sort of launched, right? So it came out in the middle of a lot of heated already purchasing, a lot of money already put in places it needed to be as opposed to people getting in early on this particular project. So I'm gonna give that the, uh, the credence of it just came in at the, the time to go. So if we came up to another bull run, say either something at the end of this year or something into the future, we may be able to see it getting back up to these 20 cents, uh, you know, and, and more. I do not, again, going back to the fully diluted, think it is a billion dollar market cap, but I do think that if we're, if we're sitting a little higher than that and we see those runs, it could be much higher. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a prediction of maybe being like an 8X from here, um, if not 10X really into the future, if we see a bull run soon. If we don't see one soon and this project goes on for a long time, who knows where we'll be when the next project comes out. But as far as any video game out there like this, I don't think there is one. Please leave a comment in the link below or a link uh, in the comments below for any other video game that you think is going to be one that rivals this because this is one that's like, they're going Unreal Tournament, I mean, Unreal Engine 5, they're going massive as far as the look on it. So it's it's one of those that I haven't seen the likes of that it, it looks really great. I, I'm really happy with what I see from it. So. Um, also looking at the Explorers, noting this is a Solana-based video game. They chose this because of its uh, uh, fast transaction speed. And really I use this, I don't use this, I haven't used Solana that much, so there might be some issues that I don't know about inside of looking at through this exchange store. The one thing that's kind of concerning to me was that 62% of the supply was with this one owner, with a, this uh, wallet um, address. And I, the thing with that is, is that I would say it, uh, it's a lot, but again, as we saw, 80% of the supply will eventually come from, but this should be the total circulating supply, right? So 62% is locked up sort of in one place. And I'm not 100% sure if it's within the address because then we can further see what transactions have been happening within that particular address. Um, and then, you know, you can see vote pro vote program, Python, Oracle, or whether or not it has to do with the particular um, looking at the the owner address here, if we're actually looking at the owner address, one thing I will notice about this owner address is if we come down to about number four, I actually cycled through a few of these just to see what they were. They were all Atlas Koken, except for when we come to number four and number, oh, number four here, it was actually for this like SBF coin, which is kind of weird. And then, um, which I think is, this is the same guy who started FTX Dex, or I keep saying Dex, but exchange. Uh, I think that's a coin that was made on him. And then, and then they also were moving some other sole prize coin within it. So please let me know what the best way, if you know of a better way, or you have some resource on how to sort of like analyze a Solana based Explorer. I would like to know it. I'm used to Ethereum myself. So that would be something I'd like to know. Cause I, I do like to see what people are holding, uh, what tokens, like what percentage we have of token distribution. And um, because that's, I feel like that's an important thing. Generally seeing one person having most of it leads to rug pulls like that's what can lead to rug pulls because they can just pull out a bunch of money so i don't think that's the case here i feel like it's got to be some sort of um contract but who knows again the project does seem to be legit other than that i guess we'll jump right over here it's one of the tabs i already have open to the video game looks great right i'm not going to play the trailer for you well i'll play you a quick snippet of it just to visually see it um but it looks good these these are all the features that you want to see i mean look at that visually like amazing looking video game obviously always these things when they get to the real game never quite looks the same but again it's unreal 5 uh, engine so it's going to be great and this is all fluff, this website. So it really is just a pretty one. And then you, you click here and then it zooms in, but you know, it looks great. The, the main point would be to come over to the Play Now website, which is a separate site they have held where we can come and kind of check out the uh, marketplace. Well, first I want to draw your attention to the leaderboard. It's great, but look at the values locked up in here that they're mentioning. And I'm not really sure what to take with this, but 
top player asset value is like 5.4 million. This is USDC it's saying, right? So we're talking US dollars with a total asset value in each one of these, like look at these 70, 52, 47 million in each one of these factions. Please tell me anyone, let me know if this leaderboard is legit and if this is actually how much money is in this because damn, they'd be a lot of people with a lot of money in crypto. I mean, I know that, but we're playing a video game. Damn, let's go. That's getting amazing. Um, and who knows, maybe some of that liquidity is gonna come in there if they're having a bunch of fun. So that might be a good bullish sign on it. And really, you can see they've got a lot of cool assets coming up. Now, this looks like one of the first 3D models. Um, I did click on, like, let's just click on this one, just for example. So I clicked on this just to take a look. And I'm like, cool, I wonder how much their NFTs are. $30,000, USDC. Again, please let me know if I'm using the wrong, if, there, if, if there's like, I'm interpreting this wrong as the same metric of USDC. But that's like, that's nuts for an in-game NFT, right? Like I know Board Ape Yacht Club, CryptoPunks, we got NFTs out there worth half a million, millions of dollars, right? But 30,000 for a ship inside the video game? I mean, I know, I guess, yeah, we're getting crazy. So this, it, it makes it a little, it's like a play to, it, it's a play to earn, but it's like the, the problem that Call of Duty was getting before, where it's like a play to win, right? Like there's gonna be people who just clearly, well, I'll buy you and just destroy you. Like, is this gonna be friendly for the average person? So there could be a little bit of concern there because that's a pricing structure that you can't even mess with right there. Like nothing I've seen before for an in-game asset. So I know there's gotta be plenty out there, but that's kind of like, that's getting nuts. And that might just be one, let's look, let's look at this. What's this rarity? This is 28,000, right? So maybe they're just trying to make it actually like a real ship. So I haven't connected any of my wallets and there's nothing else. Again, it's just your standard sort of video game website where you connect your wallet, you'd be able to see your inventory, what NFTs you have, what coins you probably have. Um, I think it's great. Oh, leader, oh yeah, Marketplace. I didn't even go over to this. They actually have, you know, you can check out the structures, you can build spaceports and collectibles. I mean, it's looking cool, man. It's really definitely looking cool, but this isn't the main gist of where this is going. So let's pull up the white paper and talk about it a little bit. Now, I'm not going to go deep into it, but I have read most of this white paper already. It is very thorough. It is very in-depth, it's very much like, well, very well put together. You know, they put in work to it. They try to analyze a lot of space gameplay, the mechanics behind it, how they're gonna go about it, how the universe will work. You can, you know, they're gonna have mini games. This is gonna be how the actual tokenomics, this is the start of how phase one and phase two will be. And the mini game, we're in phase two now where you can, I think you can part join those factions and you can start buying NFTs and start playing mini sections of it. So they're on their path to sort of their roadmap they've put out. And what I will say is that this goes in and explores a lot of different concepts behind what it is, how, how these DACs will perform, decentralized autonomous corporations, and how the economy and the economics of this world in the universe are gonna work. And that's one of the biggest things coming out of it. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second, because there's a whole 40 page white paper they did on just, like I said, the economy of the place. So that's an absolutely massive sort of undertaking that they're looking to do. Here's the tokenomics I will show you, and let me get rid of that for anything. So if you wanna take a look at them, um, Interesting, you know, 20%, the initial distribution is gonna to go to basically them, family. I like that they put family, you know, okay, cool. <laughs> Must be nice. So phase one and phase two, I believe in there, there is some uh, liquidity that's distributed in phase one, phase two being a lot of NFT sales and, and uh, asset sales. And then you can see that they mentioned this several times throughout this white paper, 80% of it, the rest of it will be distributed throughout like the, the, the rest of gameplay. So 45% being, uh, this B section here is going to be through mining, trade, missions, and etc. Right, so there's going to be a lot of it distributed, and then oh, I didn't have to show you down the bottom here, and then under the rest that's left over will be pushed out over the course of about six years. It looks like in that kind of inflation curve for you. So, you know, take that for what you will as tokenomics. I'm not displeased with that from a video game that's being looking to be pushed. Again, looking at what one account was holding, and then the next one being 13%. That's the only startling thing, so I'd, I'd like to know what that account is. Again, if anyone knows, let me know. I would like to know what that is. Um, but this is definitely a, you know, well thought out project. There's no, no doubt about it. You know, I mean, you can see these flow charts on how they wanna make it overall work. It's like actually pretty intense. But it wasn't until I got to this point here that I actually uh, started to do my whole questioning on what the, um, 
project was going up against, right? So we're looking at some big names here, Star Citizen, uh, what's the other one, Elite Dangerous that I know of, Everspace 2 is one that came out. You know, we've also got in here EVE Online, there it is. And so these are some pretty big video games out there. And my thought started to go to, are these the competitors that they're gonna, so what market share could they look to take away, right? So the hope would be that a video game comes out, it's gonna take all the people who like playing that video game, would be best case scenario, and they're gonna take all those players to this player base. What would they potentially be looking at? So I did some quick research on the numbers and I did a Google search. There were a couple websites that were asking for cookies and I said, no, you can't have cookies and you can't even have any of the milk because I don't wanna play that game where I land on a website and you're asking for cookies before I've even looked around. So I ended up going to the Steam, it looks, it's called Steam Charts, is where I kept searching. I, I would search and it was one of the ones that kept popping up. So I don't know the validity of these metrics, but they were just something I use as, met, as a comparison that I would like to get your head thinking about because I haven't, I can't validate these easily. And I did spend a little bit of time trying to find out what was the best source of these. It's just kind of hard to figure out what it is. If you have an answer to it, I would love to know below. But Elite Dangerous, we're looking at average 30 days, average players, about 5,000, right? This is what, again, these metrics are purporting to, peak players of about 9,000. This is through the Steam. Now I imagine Steam charts would only be through the Steam platform. That being said, Elite Dangerous is one of those games that you have to play through Steam, but EVE Online has its own sort of like, I think installer that you can play separately. I would say that No Man's Sky, a lot of people would play through Steam, but EVE Online, again, we're looking at 5,000. We go over to No Man's Sky, same sort of metric I looked over there, you know, maybe we're looking at 10,000 or we look at this number down here for the last 30 days, 7,000. So we're really looking, I don't know, let's even say if we double all of that. So we're looking at maybe 15 across this, these three, and then we double it for taking the assets from the other uh, games. I don't know, let me know if you think that's a fair assessment of about 30,000 average players. And then I went to look at what was another different game, but also a very massive game, Call of Duty. Obviously a different website because Call of Duty doesn't run on Steam. And I don't, again, know the validity of activeplayer.io is the website up here. Um, I did have another one, like I said, that wanted cookies, wasn't gonna give it. So if you can give me the answer to this is better, but this is the number that it puts out. Average players monthly in the last 30 days, 8.5 million. So let's even have that and say it's way off base. Let's even use the peak players as 780,000. I mean, I know that that's technically like the peak at any one time, but even if we were to take this as way off base and its percentage was way off, that's significantly more than 30,000. So I would love to know if there's a better place where I can find these answers to where that's going. But what this did raise and where this video has been going is that one particular video game is coming out. It has to compete with all other video games for people in many different genres who like different playing styles. And not only that, for best case scenario, it has to take the entire player base from all the other like type video games that are already out there. Now, I think that's a serious undertaking for them to be doing. So my concern is, again, going back to video games, putting a lot of hype, a lot of work, a lot of effort behind them, and just ending up coming out with a video game that needs work for editor, forever. One that I didn't end up looking up the numbers for, but is a massive one, is um, Star, uh, let's look here, white paper, is Star Citizen. Star Citizen still isn't finished. I just watched a video with a streamer that I usually watch and he was going back to it or he's going over to it for the first time with some friends. It's buggy as hell. That game has been in development for years now and it's still buggy as hell. So will this be left to that? You know, these are massive undertakings. Again, let's jump over to the Discord and I wanna finish that point here real quick, but looking at the links, look at all these available links, cool, here's all the assets. We've got 156,000 people who are part of this community and it's just got a massive amount of resources or at least different rooms where you can go in and chat. But what I wanna talk about is what this game is looking to do and where they're really spending a lot of time is this is the objectives, conditions and balancing mechanisms that they're looking to implement. They've put this out there for you guys to look at. This is a 40 page document that walks through the economics, they, they even, I don't know if I mentioned it in this video, that they have a polis token, which is gonna be an extra token that you can get on a stock exchange that's part of their DAO, which is gonna be the, the governance token inside of it. So you'll still use Atlas to purchase stuff, but the polis will be the in-game governance. So it's 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 gonna be a dual, dual um, uh, token economy. And they just, this is 40 pages. 
Look at all this information, these workflows on how they're going to go behind in the background. Now, this is the big point that I wanna make that I think is coming out of this game. So if you're bullish on what they're doing here, then I think there is a time and a place to at least pay attention to this project or potentially invest. Maybe you do get in because you really see that this is gonna be here, but this is a huge deal that it could potentially lean into other projects. If they could work this out and make the outline of a an easy infrastructure that they could move over to another video game and just go chunk, chunk, chunk with economies, that's gonna be great. That's what we're seeing a lot of in this crypto play to earn world and it's something fantastic. That said, it is a very perilous steep cliff to be standing on because it could be a rabbit hole that could go forever down if they start to take under this, not to mention making it look good, a massive universe that goes on forever, spaceships, shooting, trade, NFTs, crypto, blockchain, all of it being sort of kind of, you know, just each one can go expand in, in, in a million different ways. So I really want this to be something that you analyze and go, cool, interesting, look at it. Feel free to read through this. I glanced through a lot of it because I couldn't get, even get in that depth. Again, I was already happy with the project, but I feel like this is just another example of how deep they really are going into it. And so coming back to the Discord while I'm here, you know, you can see this is where I go to the point of, they're giving out videos regularly, you know, 219, they're showing you examples of shots that's coming out of Unreal Engine as they're developing, right? They're giving you the ships, the artwork is continuing to be shown and, and the environment art and all that sort of stuff. So they really are putting out what looks to be a good product. They're working on it. We saw in-game assets being developed or being the mechanics being developed inside there. But I really think we need to look at this project for what it is. It's a video game. It's a video game first and foremost. The underlying economics and, and the, 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 the player, the, the development of those that, that whole white paper there is gonna be something interesting that will come out of it, but really it's a video game. And as far as an investment goes, we did see that there's potential to make some money and I think that's gonna be a speculative investment opportunity. So you're gonna be running on the heels of a bunch of people who either don't realize what they're purchasing into or are just looking, ooh, shiny, let me buy in and ride that altcoin high in the next bull run. So. If you're willing to take on that risk, then there may be an opportunity for you. And as we looked at the charts before, you know, we're potentially talking, like I said, at going from down here where you could get in now as of making this video, this will probably go sideways if we go sideways or down to getting up to 20 cents is where it made it. So I always like to look at that metric and say, that's where it could go. So you're looking at an eight to 10 X from where we are here and the near future. So that's definitely some potential returns for you. Again, just assuming that you're making it off of a speculative run off of other the backs of other people who might be getting caught in this investment. Is this one of those that you should long haul on? I don't know. I think it might be one of those where you can ride that wave of before launch, after launch, be careful. So up to launch, maybe take profits. If there's gonna be launch coming up and we start to see an uptick going in, just like any number of projects out there, that might be the time to take projects, uh, to take profits out uh, if you're wondering about taking them. And I always think that taking some profits is not something bad you should do off the table. Take some profits off the table. You're never gonna be able to time the top perfectly because you don't know the sentiment. You don't know what other people are thinking out there. So otherwise I would put this one on a maybe sit and watch. The development team, I think there's a, is a no brainer going behind it, but it's a sit and watch because I think investing into a video game when there's a lot of other project infrastructures out there, there's a lot of the underlying blockchain technology that's gonna have massive implications over the whole crypto space, not just one specific blockchain and one specific game and game type. Um, I think you might wanna look at other places as far as an investment for the average investor. Now, I don't remember if I prefaced that at the beginning, but I think that's an inve average investor sort of opportunity from an altcoin space. There's probably bigger ones higher up the ladder I would put first. But again, as a project, looks great. Video game looks great, can't wait to play it. I didn't ever get to play Jump Into Star, uh, Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen, which I would love to look into, love the space looking games, but this might be the one. Once this comes out, I may have to jump in and play into it. So. Um, let me know what you guys think about it. If I missed anything, if there's something in there that you would have a rebuttal to that. Uh, again, I think it's a great project. I just want to know what you guys think and if you see that it's got the same sort of legs or if it is gonna be one of those that's gonna moonshot all of a sudden out of nowhere in the next bull run. That would be fantastic. So again, leave comments down below on what you think on it because I am very active in my community. And if you did find any value in this or at least 
uh, appreciated the discourse on it, you know what to do, like, subscribe, any of those things that will help the channel, I would be much appreciative of it. And I've been talking quite a bit on this one, so I'm gonna go now. Um, also, let me know any projects you think I should also review or check out. I would love to see more of those, that's a big thing. So I'll check you in the next video. Don't forget, let me know those projects you wanna see. All right guys, later.